No manager until September. Mark Canham apologises to the Irish fans. That is the state of play. David Dunn here, joined by Martin Prendergast. This is the state of play. And of course, as always, if you like what you hear, love what you see, hit that subscribe button, scan that QR code and head over to our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And of course, you can head over to our website as well, lansonroar.ie. That is lansonroar.ie. If you want opinion, and my God, uh, you're going to get opinion on this episode of the state of play. Martin, we haven't even spoken uh, about this. We actually haven't, have we? We were talking about wrestling. We were talking about all, all other things <laughs> off camera um, before we started. And we're going to get into this. Uh, Mark Canham today has apologized to the Irish fans. They've released a video on a Friday to FEI TV. Uh, Cahal Dervin gave the interview, I suppose, if you wanted to call it that. And yes, Mark Canham has said there will be no manager, probably no manager until September. Uh, they hope to get John O'Shea on board as interim manager again for the June friendlies against uh, Hungary in Dublin and Portugal in Portugal. And uh, yeah, basically, uh, they haven't met anybody who's met the criteria um, to become the next Republic of Ireland um, men's senior manager. Uh, we've hit 150 days, I believe, um, since Stephen Kenny was, I suppose, he had his contract not fired, but his contract was not renewed. Martin, uh, you are Mr. Positivity, so um, let's hear you spin some positivity here for us. I know it's, it's it's a tough day as an Ireland fan, isn't it? To be honest, um, I, I think we are in a probably one of the as a fan base. I think this is kind of an all time low, and it's not even kind of matters on the pitch that we're referring to. Sadly, um, I know that you know even just when that four minute video came out today as as some sort of justification to kind of appease the Irish fans. I think it was actually. Um, I, I read a, an article saying, you know, it won't be just good enough to hear a statement. Uh, we need to kind of see Mark Cannon uh, in a press conference, for example, yep. give, an, give this. But they they chose to kind of do it with their in-house media outlet, uh, as you said, Cole Durban. Um, and four minutes was deemed enough to try to appease the fans. I, I know a lot of Irish fans are basically disillusioned now very angry about this this whole recruitment feel that they've been lied to um and i think it, it kind of is very indicative i think of how football fans are treated generally now um in modern society maybe even like post covid um you know we returned to games missed out on lots of football for many years or, or a period of time of course and the results have been really poor for ireland of course but we, we, we're just massively taken advantage of it doesn't seem relevant to the fai how I think, I think they've got to go on a massive PR offensive now to try and restore the faith of Irish fans in Irish football and the administrators overseeing well, it. Well, he, he said that he understands the frustration. He apologises to Irish fans. I don't think he really does understand it. I mean, they, this should have been... We knew this was coming. Uh, we didn't get the news till Friday. Um, a Friday afternoon. Now, they, they call, what's it they call it? The Dead Friday or um, the Friday News Drop, where basically uh, it got, it, it's kind of, I don't know if this was a strategy or not uh, by the FAI. If it was, it's a very basic strategy that doesn't really appeal to 24th century um, media. But essentially, you drop your, you drop your, your clangor on a Friday. So the thinking is that, well, most people don't read newspapers on a Saturday or Sunday. They're more interested in sport or whatever. You know, they, they, they're they taking the weekend off with the family. It's not really it. So you drop the, the horrible news story on the Friday. Nobody pays attention. I don't know whether that's the case or not. If it is, it's very poor. It won't work. It's 20, you know, we're, we're now in the age of social media. It's 24 seven. It doesn't matter. It's on your phone. It's on your tablet. Um, You know, it's, it, it's wherever you, you, you see things, you, you hear things, you're going to hear about this. Um, yeah, he should be, Mark Hannum should be in front of a press conference answering questions and getting grilled. Um, we did say that he needed to come out and speak openly and be transparent about the whole thing as much as he could. And he, you know, that was the only way he was going to come out of this, any sort of credit, uh, credibility. That wasn't it, Martin. That was not it today. What, what they've they've done there 
um, you know, oh, in hindsight, as he said, you probably shouldn't have given deadline. No, you shouldn't have. And they were his deadlines. He was very happy to sit there in front of the cameras and go, oh, you know, like, oh, yeah, very, very uh, smuggled himself. Um, you know, we'll have one in April, early April. Don't you worry about it. And then we had another update. Oh, yeah, it'll definitely be April. And we we sat here, Martin, didn't we? We, we were like, do you know what? Okay. We're going to have an interim manager for March. No problem. Because if that means, because by the look of this guy, what he's telling us, we're taking this guy at face value. that He's got somebody lined up, but for whatever reason, contractual reasons, as he said, and they are his words, by the way. We're not making his own. Mm. They are his words. Um, you know, we got somebody lined up contractually, but you know, we can't really go into it too much. But yeah, don't worry, it's in a bag kind of thing. We thought, okay, lovely, be interesting to see who it is. And we thought they were doing a splendid job of keeping everything under wraps. And it turns out the reason why it was under wraps, there was nothing to have under wraps. There was nobody. And yeah, I, I, I have to admit, I'm fuming, Martin. I am fuming because I feel like I've been, I feel like an absolute idiot. I feel like an idiot today, giving these guys the benefit of the doubt. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, and that is a familiar, I think, feeling with, with many of us as Irish match-going fans, to be honest. You know, there's just so many kind of facets to this. You know, you've got the whole thing of the pathway, which Mark Cannon was selling to Irish football, uh, you know, around the island of this is what I believe we're going to do. And then you had the the women's recruitment. I, th I think I think it's just everything is just kind of built up on this to be honest uh, and i think there's just people losing faith with the irish football now uh the administrators this is kind of probably one of the, i dare say it maybe a, a nail in the coffin um you know we know jonathan hill's gone so they might spin it now and say well we had a lot of stuff going on with jonathan hill when you knew we were up in the eroctus and we did we couldn't say it at the eroctus but they did that you know i don't they didn't have faith in jonathan hill um but it yeah. just is it's, it's very frustrating and i think it's worthy of another book from Mark Ty and uh, Paul Rowan because this will be fascinating to look back at th this history of this kind of period of the FAI. And the sad thing is, as a very positive Irish football fan, as you said at the start of the show, I just feel like kind of been made a mug of. I think we're, we're being laughed at football-wise. Even yeah. when I say about, you know, which a lot of fans are trying to promote Irish football. I'm always talking about, you know, the commercialism of it, that we need money. And even the FAI are asking the government for, for money. Well, they haven't even got around to doing that because they haven't got the house in order. But it's just a bit of a joke now. You know, like people are, are saying, I can't believe you go and follow them. I can't believe you go and watch them. Uh, and you, you travel you, around the world. Like, what are you doing? Like, because you know, right? they're an absolute joke. And it's not wrong, is it, really? No, I, and when I got the email, the media email, uh, as as you get as well uh, from the FBI about Mark, oh, Mark Cannon, basically, you know, he's making this, he's made this video. Have a look at it on my personal email because I am a season ticket holder. Um, it says, "Oh, by the way, get your tickets for Hungary. It's going to be amazing." Got I, I know that. It's just like yeah. It's just, it's it's just incredible. so disjointed. The FAI is just so disjointed. Like, yeah. if, like you look at Hill, I mean, I, I I know we want to talk about Mark Cannon and stuff, but like even Jonathan Hill, I just think of since he came into that job, we, we spoke previously on a podcast about, you know, um, him, like that he didn't engage, he didn't shake enough hands, didn't bother getting involved. You know, someone should have been kind of shaking him by the shoulders and saying, this is what you need to get involved with Irish football here. Like, same, same now a little bit with Mark Cannon. The, the faith is going. It, it's just eroding. You know, I know Packy Bonner's in there as a voluntary d director on the board. And he, he's kind of put his head above the parapet. But even people I see are, are knocking Packy and saying, you know, you know, why are we trusting him to even get it right? And why aren't we hearing from him and things? And, you know, it, it's just a complete mess. They're and, running football like, into the ground. They're running the national team into the ground, Martin. They are. Yeah. And, and I, I'm, I'm firmly to believe that we can't just say, yep, let's sack it all off and, and let's start again. It won't ever um, work doing that. But I, I just I don't, don't know, know where the future is. I, I That's where I am. I know I keep using the word disillusioned. Like, you know, we run the supporters club. Even Chris celebrating like 10 years last year, the Confederation Supporters Club, trying to do you, everything you're doing. I'll be honest, everything you do to try and promote Irish football as a supporters club, you're doing in the face of any support, really, from the FAI. Uh, I'll say that on here now quite openly. Anytime you have to contact them about things, 
you, you just don't get a response. You know, we tried to engage with Jonathan Hill in the past, as supporters clubs have, didn't get even the courtesy of that, never attended events. Mark Cannon, I think, has been involved a little bit with stuff. You, you, you're, you're kind of begging them, in a sense, to give you the support you need to promote Irish football. And it shouldn't be that way around, to be honest. They should be very grateful of of fans who were traveling. Like, you know, today, for example, um, before five o'clock, we had to meet a deadline to apply for on the away portal for the Portugal away game in June. So we're, we're eight weeks out from that, basically. Um, and we're pushed. Can we pay deposits? Can you now mm. make your invoice and stuff like that? Um, you know, but for what? Like to, to see a team now who are no manager without a manager, they're going to face. Uh, we don't even know who's going to be leading the team over today. They're going to be doing a camp, of course, and there'll be all that PR spin of it of showing us videos of the lads. I mean, even the players. I would love to see the senior players going out and say, what the fuck is going on here, to be honest? Because, like, it, it's just ridiculous. We saw a little bit of it, James McLean, coming out the other day and saying, what's going on? Um, you know, with, with his mm. thing, and we'll, we'll talk about that on, obviously, future shows, because I think that's worthy of talking about, because we'll see... That, that kind of shows a little bit what's been going wrong in the background. But at the same time, I just think so, surely senior pros like Seamus Coleman perhaps need to be made aware that the fans are very, very pissed off with this now. I, I, feel, I do feel sorry for, for the good people. There are good people in Abbas. Yeah, there are, right? yeah. Uh, but, you know, look, in, you know, you're having a, you're having a bit, oh, they're going to show us videos and everything's fine. Well, that's a social media job. That's what you have no, to do. No, I know do. that, yeah. You know, and you have to do it. And, you know, I feel sorry for those guys. I feel sorry for the players. There's some. I feel sorry for the stakeholders to support. We're, we're, you know, I'm a stakeholder, Martin. You're a stakeholder, and if you're watching this, you're a stakeholder too. You're probably a fan of the team. You probably have a season ticket. Mm. You you probably go to all the games as well. We all go to the games. If I didn't get a media pass, you know, I'd be going anyway with my season ticket. I live in London. Martin lives in London. We travel to all the games. You know, that's not paid for. So we go, we go to support our our country. Um, the best we can and we're not the only ones there's people that live in Donegal who don't have trains have to get buses down there's people that live in the other end of the country who you know don't drive but they have to get public transport public transport in Ireland is quite poor outside of Dublin even in Dublin is not great all these things all these sacrifices and you know we're just looking here even as a podcast man we're just looking to have a bit of positivity just a bit of fucking direction that the people in charge know what the fuck is going on. It is rudderless. It's been rudderless for some time. Jonathan Hill, right? Jonathan, this lad went in front of the Oireachtas, in front of the Public Accounts Committee, right, in February gone, with a fully redacted email saying, oh, <laughs> you can't have to trust me here, lads. You know, it's grand, but, you know, it was just a joke, but there you go. Can we have half a billion quid? He has fucked probably a once in a lifetime well for a very long time anyway chance for the fei to go and say can we have some money please because we're different we're changed we're not like we were in the past and yeah here we are four years later in the exact same situation you have a you have a technical director is he a he's a director of football I, i've seen technical director now he's director of football mark kind of coming out saying trust the process how can you trust the process you have told us yourself you have come on um media and told us <laughs> We're going to have a guy in April, and you tell us at the, at the early April, mind, and then you have at the back end of April that you tell us, oh, by the way, it won't be till September. Could you imagine, right? You're a new manager coming in. Your first fixture is going to be England at home, one of the best teams in the world. Could be European champions when we played them in September. Fabulous side. Like, you, you, you know, it kills me to say that, but they are a fabulous team, and we've got to play these guys. What poor bastard is going to want to take over that team? That's your first fixture. I said this on the last podcast, Martin, as well, that we did. Like, that's your first fixture. You've been given no time to train. You've been given no time to 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 look for granny rulers, to look for extra players. You know, Casey McAteer, what's happened there? You know, these guys, because we don't have a manager. It's going to be nearly 10 months. Um, we're, yeah, we're in, a worse, we we're, in a worse, we're in a worse state now, though. We don't have a manager. We don't even have a CEO now. We're in a, worse a marketing state. director. But we've got Can nothing. You... Like it, it, it's it's just interim is, is the buzzword, and you know, and, and yet we're expecting people at grassroots level, frustratingly, to now invest in this pathway that Mark Cannon's put in place, which I've said as well is a massive risk. I, and I'm not going to get personal with Mark Cannon because I I think actually this would be I'll be probably howl that for this, but you know I, I think he's come into that environment and believe in what his 
remit was to put his pathway in place. And now he's been kind of put forward as, yep, now you're involved in the, the picking of managers and presenting that to the board. That's all right. That's all correct administration. But he's not got the support from other parties there. And then the CEO performed disgracefully, fr- frankly, at the Oroctus. He knew Stop. he was going. I- I'll be honest. My, my view on his care. performance there, he didn't yeah. give a shit. There's been no consequences to that. He's off now Garden Lee, fully paid. It doesn't matter how shit he did his job. And he did do it shit. I don't care now. Right? We're getting the benefit for a long time. Uh, even yeah. the Sky sponsorship deal. It's absolute nonsense. He just failed to deliver on so many things. Undermined Vera Powell as well on the women's thing. I mean, even the positivity around the World Cup of the women getting there is kind of eroding because people are pissed off. People are turning on Kate McCabe. That It was an internal kind of civil war between Vera Powell and whatever. We'll all have views on that, of course. But, like, just the interest has gone, I think, from that. Um, you know, I, but despite that, we're still getting fans who will go. And... That that's what they're just taking for granted. And soon enough, there will be come a time where people will just stop going and it'll be one game at a time and they'll they'll drop off five, ten percent and think, why am I investing my life, my time, my money into this association that, that frankly don't give a shit about me? And we know why they do that, and, and it's demonstrated how they don't give a shit is frankly on the season ticket prices, even on the, the double header duo packages they, they present to everybody, and even the the kind of just the arrogance to send that message today to fans as stakeholders, like you said, and yet at the same time pushing to promote a, a ticket for a game where you're not going to have a manager. It's an end of season game. So half the lads probably won't be bothered even turning up, um, you know, and you know, there's nothing to be positive about. Whereas you could have had your new manager in there and, and building into that September window where it does matter. And we're now on the, cusp of entering the Nations League campaign against really well-ranked teams who've just been relegated to our level, to be frank, and then they're going to probably give us a hiding, and then you'll have more people drop off, and they'll be embarrassed in Irish football, and that's just a shame to see, ultimately. I, um, so, yeah, it's just a very, very hard time to be an Irish fan. Just, just, just for clarification on that, so I'm not accused of lying, I got an email from the FEI um, about the media Mark Hannum thing. That was at twelve thirteen PM, and then that was in my media um, account, and then my personal one. I got a one minute past one today. Forty five minutes later, don't miss out on tickets now. Be there to see the action versus Hungary. Um, now I'm pretty certain those things are automated, and they're automated. I, you know, I book things. I automate things weeks in advance because there's only so many hours in day, and I understand that. So that's probably what's happened there. But you, you know, you couldn't make up that time, and really, um, yeah, Martin, it's just you know, and, and now this is why the League of Ireland is taking, which is great, by the way. It's great the League of Ireland's taken off, but there's no money in it. Mm-hmm. You know, you had more incidents tonight with with, with a flare thrown at, at Derry Shamrock Rovers game, um, flare on the pitch, a kid ran on the pitch and ran off with it, um. They're getting into that now because they're sick of this. Like, the, there is no buzz. There is no buzz around an international fixture anymore. You know, I mean, look, we're, we're going off to play in Portugal, which is, you know, end of the season, June. Yeah. It's going to be a camp as well. I mean, even this, they're, they're, they're going to get 1,500 tickets for that. They'll be lucky if 1,500 Irish fans bother going to that game. Okay. We'll be, I'll be there anyway. <laughs> yeah. But 1,500 going. The tickets were a tenner. That's 15 grand. You could have done a whole thing of, you know, all right, do the whole process of taking applications and, and, and things and then actually make the ticket free. Let the FAI cover that. 15 grand is nothing to an association. It's absolutely nothing. It won't probably be a couple of days of Jonathan Hill's holiday leave or something like that. Um, right. But it, it's just it's nothing in the context of things. But they could do some kind of gestures for the traveling fans. They don't think like that, though. Like, I feel sorry for this David Carell coming in now um, as as a interim CEO because he, he's coming into a shit show. Like, who wants to even be doing that? Yeah, job? well, he, he was, was there coming as a manager. No, I know he was. I know he was. Yeah. But still, I don't, just, I don't like, know. How many, sure. What are people doing in these roles? Like, there's no accountability. Even six months that, that we're, Got- we're also in this you know, situation, which is frankly absurd as well, where you've got a board of, you know, representation of, of different, um, you know, women and, and and men on it. And we're trying to be all 
great with that. And I've mentioned this before, but like they they don't they're not football people. They don't understand football half of them. Like and like, and like you know, I know as I said earlier, Packy Bonner will will be praised and also knocked by different Irish fans, whatever their views are. But you know, I, no. I actually think we need to get across. We need you know. I know when Noel Quinn came in, and yeah, some of his ideas were a bit absurd and stuff. We had Noel Mooney in there, of course, but. I think there needs to be a big push now of how can they turn this around to be positive about Irish football, like ex players. I, d- I don't know who the, who the figurehead's going to be for it. I, I just I think it's very very worrying. There's no real figurehead I have any faith in, or you, you know, a person who should be. And I've often said it on this, and this it will sound crazy I say, it, but a person who should be unquestioned about his his role in Irish football is Robbie Keane. But sadly, he's gone the other way. Of never, you know, not never really going to be welcome back to you. And I don't think a lot of people were very pissed off with how he is, of course. But, um, but, but, you know, we we need the figurehead. We need someone who everyone can trust, who is on the ground in Irish football. And and you'll 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 laugh now, Dave. You'll go at me for Man United bias, but I think that's where John O'Shea is, is trying to be involved. Um, like because I think everyone trusts him. They know he's a decent guy. But I actually feel that John O'Shea. This was outrageous again. That Mark Cannon thing. He's not even spoken to him. Yeah. To say well, he said he's spoken to him, but they've not agreed it. So John O'Shea is around and go. Like... I want a million euro to come in and do this interim job. Yeah. Now we know John O'Shea has ambitions to be the Irish manager, but I find it quite sad in a way. Not like I just I find it a little bit sad that John O'Shea's not hawking himself out for the role, but like, I just think he's being disrespected again by Mark Cannon and the FAI. How, just, just how, you know, you're not good enough for us, but oh, we need you now. So we're going to go back. In. I don't uh, want that, him becoming another Noel King or Don Givens who we need, when we need, we come in and you do the job. Like respect him. Yeah. I mean, you could do a lot worse than John O'Shea yeah, as in have nobody until September. At least if you put John, look right now, I think a lot of people will just be, yeah, just put John O'Shea in charge. A lot of people have said yeah, that. Just exactly. put John O'Shea yeah. in charge. I'd say that as well. You know, you know, I, I've not seen enough from John O'Shea over two games that he's definitely the man. Uh, but what I, what I have seen from those two games with John O'Shea is that he's not he's not Steve Staunton. No, you know he he's more astute than Kenny. You know he was. I, I'd on. like. I would like John O'Shea to get the job right and push in the media and do a PR spin himself to get the job, get the backing of fans to get the job, and then undermine the FAI and make it about John O'Shea again. If Roy Keane had been given a job, he could have done the same thing. He, you, you have to have a powerful kind of person in there who's confident enough in their own ability to say, I'm doing this for Irish football because I'm not happy with how all it's... this shit's going on in the background and get the fans that kind of siege mentality of, uh, it won't be great, but you want it that we want to invest in the team and the manager rather than all the shit you're actually achieving despite all that crap in the background. Because that it, could have been a sense of Roy Keane or Duffer being in there. Because they it, I don't think they'll ever work with the FAI. No, it, it could have been. In, like, I mean, where we're at at the moment. Like, they're on about, you know, we need a, the right criteria or whatever. What criteria? What? Okay, yeah. You know, the best, best person for a job. Like, what are you talking about? You're desperate. You're yeah. fucking desperate now. You're on your knees. We're on our knees now. The, the best candidate for the job was Lee Carsley. He said no to you in, in November. Yeah, so fucking forget him then. That's what I'm saying. And just go and yeah. say, actually, we've actually reset it and we're going to give it to a young, ambitious coach like John O'Shea, who we know you can put the medals on the table. We're going to help him. We're going to give it and, to and, and also, yeah, and the public, we want you to trust. It's a four-year process. We're going to believe in this guy. Yeah. We want you to get behind him. Get him out there in front of the media and he'll do very really well with, with that. Get him touring and get Ireland. The, and, and, yeah, and get all the old school. Like, you, not and bad, do it. Man United fan base are going to be supportive of that. Right, even yeah. non non Irish fans would know that. Even I'd say most people would class John O'Shea as a top pro. There's no scandal around him or anything like no, that. No, he's so good, good lad. Just yeah, be supportive. Yeah. People think even Sunderland came across really, really well. Right, so y- you've got that. You've got that positive spin around it. I, I just think it's embarrassing the fact how they're treating him. To be honest, and I wouldn't have any. I, I think he can't really lose in this situation. Because he can come in and they can go, but also he can tell them to fuck off and no one would blame him at all. Do you know, yeah. like, he, he's nothing to lose. People say, I oh, wouldn't touch him with a brush, but he's nothing. Joe O'Shea's nothing to lose. Just don't okay. be stunned. And look, I don't, don't mean to keep pick, pick, picking on Steve Stone, yeah. but what I mean is the way Steve Stone behaved himself yeah. as our manager. You know, <laughs> at least with John O'Shea, just, have, uh, just act with a bit of decorum, a bit of fucking maturity. Um, 
apply yourself di- diligently to the job. Apply yourself to it. You've got a decent backroom staff. There, you've got some good coaches in there, and there are some good coaches in there as well. Um, and you know what, the FEI will give you if if it's if there's progress. The people will get behind you. Yeah, That's we will get behind you. The the media will get behind you because they'll say, Do you know what? Okay, fair enough. It's where we're at because unless it's somebody. Unless we get a sugar daddy who's going to pay a ludicrous amount of money for somebody who is past their best, that isn't going to happen anymore. Or you're going to get somebody who's young, up and untried, as we said, like an Anthony Barry or whatever. Or you're going to get somebody who's going to want to do it because they want to do it because they're Irish and they're proud. And that's someone like a John O'Shea or a Mick McCarthy or whatever. But a John O'Shea, I think, is most realistic um, and probably the best bet that we've got right now. And, yeah, and I think that's what they've books. got to do now because there, there are still there, 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 there's a lot of um, anger. There's a lot of people pissed off with it. I mean, if, if they'd have turned around today, and even for example, if we turn around today and say we're actually giving it to John O'Shea, um, you know, even as interim manager with a view to getting the per- role permanently, we think it's that kind of job at the moment, and we're gonna we're looking in the background to see how we can support him and what else we need to do. Mm-hmm. People might have understood it, but it's very frustrating today. And I just think it's like I said, disrespect for John O'Shea how they're treating him. But I, I, I really, I, I'd like to see him get it, and I'm hoping he's going to be the interim manager because I think it's farcical that if you bring someone else in to be the interim um, no King's manager back. now, yeah, thankfully <laughs> he's, uh, he's ruled out. But um, but you know, I, I just think I... it's just very, very difficult. I mean, look, it's a shame as well. Uh, you know, I think as well, why I'd also like to see John O'Shea get it, because I, I I think we kind of need to clean house within the squad a bit. I'd like to see John O'Shea go back in there now for June and call out them fuckers, whoever's in that squad, who had a problem with whatever they were doing on the training pitch with the hours they spent and all that and leaking shit to the press. I think I, I think as well, Mark Cannon, I think that they sh- we're, we're just too nice as a fan base. People are, we are up in uproar about all, all of today and stuff, but you can see it in the media now. The media are going to turn because the media are pissed off that they never got the opportunity. I see Gav Clooney, um, Dan McDonald, all friends of the pod, of course. Um, they've all said, you know, that they'd never had the opportunity to do it in-house with their PR kind of driven communications department. I think they've even got external advisors on that I read earlier. Um, you know, it, it, it is hiding in the background. Um, it won't wash. And- no, no, it's, it's just not going to wash the it won't wash. It's, it's a laugh. I just found like, you know, People are calling for Cannon to go, and, and he's got to be cle- cleverer. So is Packy, to be honest. I think they've got to be, they've, they've really got to try and restore the faith in Irish football. And like, trust, trust the process. You, you're in charge, you, you know, you're, direct, you're director of football of an organization whose name, reputation was in the mud. And hasn't done much to improve it over the last four years. And actually it capitulated in February um, on an official level. You know, even even if you don't know the full ins and outs of it, if you're a casual fan and you hear of funding suspended Sport Ireland, Oroctus, you're going to get PTSD. You're going to go back to John. Oh my God, it just they haven't changed. Even if you don't know the full details of it and what it was. Um, like you're, you're, you're telling us to trust the process. You've been telling, you've been giving us You've been giving us deadlines. You have been giving us deadlines. I'm proud of you, yourself, Mark Cannon, be giving us deadlines. You tell us to trust the process. Mate, you know, the FEI isn't a golden brand in Ireland. It's It's been dogged by decades of mismanagement. You name it. It's Its name is in the toilet. And it has been for years. And years and years and years and years and years. And... Jonathan Hill's job was to basically steer it in the right direction, keep it away from that, keep it away from the front pages, keep it on the back pages, just nice and boring, nice and quiet. We forget who Jonathan Hill is because we shouldn't really know who Jonathan Hill mm. well, You and I should know who Jonathan Hill is, but your casual fan shouldn't know who Jonathan Hill is. But everybody knew who Jonathan Hill was when the holiday payments thing blew up. And it was the same nonsense over and over again. And, you know, that's what Canham has to realise, mate. You're you're not you don't have any goodwill with the public and the Irish fans, like as an association, and that's sad. And you know what annoys me, and we're going over a little bit here, sorry, is that I, right, and yourself, we have tried to and I've taken plenty of flack for this, is that I have actually tried 
um, to give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh, maybe he's got something yeah. up his sleeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know what, what what's going on here? And I've just I thought, now surely to God this can't happen. That this man is going to show up and say, by the way, we don't have anybody. And that's exactly what happened. Mm. It's um, it's unbelievable, Martin. What other association would we be talking about in the fucking world that would come out and do that? It's incredible. Look. Like, as I said, the the more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah, it, it's, this it's is the just... FBI. We've always been disillusioned with it, to, to be honest, and history of it shows that. But like, I just think now it is there's a lot of people don't give a shit. Jonathan Hill didn't give a shit about how no. he performed because there was no consequences to him. Mark yeah. Cannon today, yeah, he can apologise and stuff like that, and it's all pre it's not and it, it's it's just you know. He Fans needs will to not be... vote with their feet, though. I don't think in in May. Oh no, there'll be less ticket sales. But like the season tickets are sold. You're going to go. Should be anyway. a protest. Like, we need protest. There should be. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I, I think we kind of do. Yeah, but I, I think even you know we were involved in shit commercial deals under John Delaney with the Mike Ashley stuff, and we're still paying debt off of that, right? With Sports Direct and all that kind of stuff. We're Good still. Story. We're now in another shit deal. We're in a shit deal. I'll give the benefit to Sky, but because but even we're in a shit deal, the fact they go on our home shirt, the name, we should be getting out of that now. Like take less money, but that's that, that's why it's less money. You don't go on our shirt, but it's just very very poor, and, and they've just, not engaged with the fans, and yeah. you know they they're not in the real world. Even the cost of shirts, cost of tickets, the fan experience is is absolutely shite in the Aviva. Let's be honest, half the bars are closed now. I don't have a problem with them being closed in a sense if they if you still offer something better though and you you kind of bring fans in and you have something pre-match some other way but uh, like it's just a shit thing to come into and, and be ripped off on food I mean maybe that's just Ireland to be honest I I, I don't um, think that's I don't think that's the FEI that's just uh, that sorry man that's just Ireland <laughs> No no yeah maybe it is but no no but I just yeah. think like I've, yeah, I've said many makes money you, there's no, no bars around match day like going along the street you don't see the new shirt the new kit launch all those things factor in you know this... I'm not on about ripping people off or uh, and, and like driving money and stuff but we're a skint association we we've got to get some buzz around it by not perhaps the money side of it but more just are promoting like even even nostalgia dare i say you know they didn't get it right with um charlie o'leary on the pitch he didn't have a picture of that didn't have the video of him on the screen great little idea to do it but like they should be a big thing of who's this guy and and have someone pitch side chatting to him them kind of things you have to get the young people involved you know i, I there's loads of stuff you see it, it all uh, on at premier league yeah. games now and stuff it, it's the fan experience is important People there's no are not fan... going to go to shite anymore. No, they're not. No fan, no fan engagement. No fan experience. No. I, I think they will vote with a feet. Um, I, by the way, I'm not telling you to boycott the games or anything like that. But I, I, I do think people will vote with a feet. Um, that I think this is worse. Um, I, I've never known the situation as bad as this. I really don't. Um, because I thought, okay, it was bad. With sixty million quid worth of debt. Um, when it was announced in 2019, at the end of 2019, when he went through the memory, they, they re audited all the books. And I thought this is the worst day in Irish football. This is embarrassing. I think it's worse now because lessons should have been learned. Um, we've no CEO, we're rudderless at the top. We've got a director of football, jury's out on him, man. The jury's out on him. He should have put himself out if you know he should have taken an absolute grilling. And it's a case of right. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go out there. At least, you, at least, you have the respect. Say, do you know what? I'm so sorry about this. I'm gonna face the grilling. I'm gonna answer your questions because the people want to know. I, I'll answer what I can. You know, can't go into confidentiality, whatever. But I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna because I'm gonna show you I do care and I am really sorry about this. Not try to fob it off on a Friday, a Friday afternoon with your in-house media. Uh, that's not good enough. And I think this is the worst. This is really the worst I've seen it. And. You know, We're you not go to talk about football. You know, you know, there's not even the feel good the factor of well, actually, look, we've got games now. Let's be excited. We're in a good kit. We're in a. We've got big games coming up. Like we have got big games coming up. We've got England at Wembley. That that is an attractive fixture. Don't care and we are going. And, and that's the only fine. thing they're banking on. That's the only thing they've banked on that they'll get money for that England game. They will. Anyway, right? anyway. But but at the same time, you know, 
it will be probably a horror show and you're not preparing the team. Like I, That's what I'm saying about the, the senior pros have surely got to be angry that we're not going to have the best opportunity to prepare ourselves now because you've not put in a coach. Your, your, direct, a manager. your, your director of football telling you today yeah. that trust the process, but we're not going to have a manager yeah. until the first competitive game, what, which what, is against like, England. Yeah, what, what do you expect us no, to do? No prep. Like, no yeah. preparation. Like there's, there's no manager in there having a look at, okay, you know, we need talent, so we're going to go out to granny rulers. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Giving us the absolute best chance watching our players, talk, building a relationship with players, having, you know, because there's no one in doing that job. John O'Shea, he's not going to do it because he's going to be interim manager. He's just going to pick another nice, safe squad like you had the last time. I don't blame, and that's not his fault. Yeah, yeah, but way. he can't because he can't be given the no, reins. He's not trusted. He's got to be saying, I'm not trusted to do it how I want to. Like, you know, even if I, I, if I was a senior pro in that dressing room, I'd be going, is it right that you've, uh, Mark Cannon, whoever you are, right? Whoever you think you are and what you're all about, you're telling me, like Seamus Coleman could be saying, you're telling me I'm in football 20 years. You're saying that to our new manager, they've got to have, you, that they can't bring in their own backroom staff. Is that, can you just clarify that? Is that, is that the case? That's a question that I'd like to see the press ask and answer. Is that one of the criteria? We want to know your criteria, Mark, because otherwise it's not very clear to us. We're very pissed off. I argue that out. If you're so certain that that's the right way for mm. your pathway and your manager, tell us that. But not all this vague, oh, contractually and all this kind of stuff. All they're doing is looking at Euros, looking at the end of the season here where people are out of contract. People are being cynical as well. Um, and perhaps right, saying, you know, the FAI have saved 10 months of wages, which maybe they have. But at the same time, I'm, I'm just, I was incredulous today when I saw that he, when he said, yeah, well, we're, we're hoping John O'Shea, we've got to speak to him about being the interim manager again. I'm like, fucking hell, like he's been in Dublin. Like... You know, he, he was in Dublin doing the launch thing with you for the Europa League final and stuff like. It's just, just fucking embarrassing. It's, it's, it's just such a shit show. I, yeah, I, very sorry, folks. You know, you haven't, we haven't. We, if we have repeated ourselves, um, we haven't. As I said, we 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 didn't speak about this. No, no, we haven't spoken about this all day because I think I, I'll be honest. I didn't read a lot about it. I was so pissed off this morning seeing it, and I thought, uh, and I've read a few bit, and I, and WhatsApps were flying around and basically laughing stock. Yeah, um, and. I'm just it, thinking. I've got sometimes with those that shit ha happens and hits. I just need time to digest it and get my own thoughts before I'm kind of swayed by yeah. other people. And like I read no. your article as well, Dave, on LansdowneRoad.ie, of course. Um, and I thought, yeah, they kind of did sum up how I feel. Um, but it was an it was an angry. <laughs> yeah, but and, and you know, like we look, we were saying, you know, like we are representatives of the fans views i think you know that that's and we're very honest all the time and it's not criticism of the good people working in the fei we know that no. and, we, and we've often supported them and said this is what's what's happening and we know like even when the team get together yeah that, that promotion the videos are all very important but like, i just feel we need a bigger bigger kind of head statesman to come out and reassure irish fans that look trust this i'd like to see the media get the opportunity to speak to packy speak to paul cook the president um you know, let's let's get these guys accountable for their what they've done. Like, why hasn't it worked out? Um, and then we might trust that. Okay, look, it's not ideal that we wait until September, but I might understand it a bit more. At the moment, I'm just angry, pissed off. I'm going to be asked no. to put my hand in my pocket for June, then September games, and we're trying yeah. to build interest with some supporters clubs. You reach out to the FAI and you get blanked. You get nothing. They don't engage with us anymore, and eventually, Irish fans will just walk away. I think so, and I think that's what's happening. But listen, we're going to leave it there. Um, we've gone a little bit over. We do apologise. No, we were half an hour gone about forty minutes of pure rage and anger, and 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 we are angry. We're genuine. This is a genuine response. We're not looking for. We're not doing an Arsenal TV on it or fan t whatever they're called. Like we basically did not speak about it, and we just this is it's like right. Let's get into it. Um. So yeah, sorry we haven't been. <laughs> We don't as positive as usual. <laughs> as positive as usual, and we don't know really. We don't really know where we go from here. To be honest with you, God, where do we go? But anyway, um, we're going to leave it there. We will be live, uh, this Sunday at probably around quarter to ten. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, um, we will be live, and we want to get your thoughts on Sunday on the Facebook and YouTube channel. Uh, but as always, guys, do hit that subscribe button on youtube we are trying to grow it it does help um if you can like this video it'd be fantastic um if you scan that qr code on the video you can also check out our socials at facebook 
uh, Instagram, Twitter, and you can head over to lansonroar.ie. That is lansonroar.ie if you want an opinion. And I'm sure there's going to be a few of those banning about today. Anyway, we're going to leave you there. I'm David Dunn. He is Martin Prendergast. And remember, guys, trust the process. <laughs>